Well, something shocking is happening in Poland that we should all be paying attention to. Of course, the mainstream media is totally ignoring this story. Polish farmers are revolting right now against Ukraine. And this morning, Polish farmers started blocking the Ukrainian border at multiple entry points along the eastern border. But that's just one part of the story. It gets bigger than this. Joining me now is Dr. Mike Krupa from Warsaw, Poland. He's the host of Votum TV, and he's one of the smartest people in Poland. I'm going to give you that distinction, doctor. Good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you, Clayton. I'm flattered, and I hope to uh, uh, to live up to your standard. <laughs> <laughs> always. You always do. So this is an unbelievable... Let's talk about the Polish farmers piece first and the blocking of the border, and then I want to get into what the president of Poland released, which as a NATO country is really shocking to call attention to the sort of the Western land grab that has happened in Ukraine. So what's happening with the Polish farmers at this hour? Well, today, uh, the Pol there are a subsection of the Polish farmers that were protesting thus far. Uh, these are mainly farmers from southeastern Poland, from the Subcarpathian region, uh, announced that they will be blocking all uh, border entries into Ukraine. Now, they stated that they won't be blocking buses, for example, or crucial transportation or just regular people going by, but there will be a major stoppage at several of these, at all of these points, actually, between Poland and Ukraine, I think until six this evening. Uh, this is a one-off, but it's meant to be a sort of signal to the government that they are not happy with the current policy and that none of the fundamental issues that they were addressing in their uh, last protest, the bulk of which took place in February and March, where we saw massive uh, blockades of Polish cities and thousands upon thousands of Polish farmers coming out with very original ideas uh, about conducting uh, these blockades. Uh, these demands have not yet been met. As a matter of fact, the uh, European elections that are coming up in June to the European Parliament, uh, I think, are only going to strengthen the unity of the farmers as they demand action on the so-called Green New Deal, the European Green New Deal, uh, which will be devastating for Polish farmers and not only Polish farmers, but also the question of the continual uh, flooding of the Polish uh, market with Ukrainian cheap grain and, Ukra and other Ukrainian products that are basically dumped onto the market and that the European Union, due to its anti-Russian fervor, let in because, well, they're Ukrainian. But as it turns out, and I guess we're going to be talking about this, they're not so much Ukrainian because their owners are not residing in Kiev. Right. So the idea is that, oh, you're helping all these Ukrainian farmers, right? You're going to be able to push all of this grain through Poland into Europe and everyone's going to have all of the spoils of this. But it turns out that's not the case at all. In fact, your president, uh, who just met with Donald Trump, I think yesterday, actually, yep. uh, released this really startling report on the state of Ukraine's agricultural land. And it exposed how so many of these foreign firms have taken over significant control of Ukrainian farmland. Basically, they own Ukraine. I mean, we're talking BlackRock, we're talking all of this. And so this is not, and it's to me, it's surprising as a Westerner watching this as a NATO country. I mean, Poland joined NATO in 1999, a, very strong NATO country, for a NATO country to basically say, Ukraine has been sold out to these NGOs. I find this stunning. What's How's this playing in Poland? Well, you know, some people are saying that the president watches uh, redacted after hours, so maybe that's where he's getting his ideas. But uh, uh, hi, pre it, hi, president of Poland. Nice to see you, Duda. <laughs> indeed. President Andrzej Duda, if you're listening, how you doing? Uh, but uh, the, the, the thing with President Duda is in the last couple of months, he's been making a couple of surprising statements that would sort of lead into what he said, I think, two days ago on Lithuanian radio, because in February he made a statement that really triggered a lot of people in Poland, a very sensible statement where he was interviewed uh, by two interviewers on this new sort of dissident podcast or the Polish Joe Rogan type of podcast where he said that, yeah, at the end of the day, if you look at the history of Crimea, it was mostly Russian. And just for saying that, everybody went after him. Uh, and let's not forget that President Andrzej Duda is one of the most fervent uh or at least was until recently, one of the most fervent proponents of Crimea being returned to Ukraine. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, a year or two ago, uh, there was a conference held in Poland. Uh, it's called, I think, the Crimean format, where everybody who is in favor of the return of Crimea to Ukraine gathers to find ways to uh, reintegrate Crimea into uh, Ukraine. And President Andrzej Duda spearheaded that. So his words on Lithuanian radio about who actually owns uh Ukrainian agriculture were fairly strong. They're fairly based, I would even say, because he's, he came out straight and said they're owned basically by Western oligarchs, by Western capital, and we can't allow 
uh, such unfair competition to enter into the Polish market because we would basically have, uh, you know, a crushing defeat for the Polish farmers and a total destruction of any agricultural industry in a country that is uh, relying on agricultural industry for so much of its food um, and not only in exports and so on. Uh, so I would guess that in, in a moment of truth, I think what President Duda was trying to do, I'm trying to always see this from the point of view of electoral politics, is possibly help out his uh, former uh, party law and justice ahead of the European Union uh, elections coming up in June. I think the problem with law and justice is right now is that because they signed off on all the crazy ideas of the European Union, including Fit for 55, the Green New Deal, and so on, they are trying now to distance themselves from all this because they have uh, competition on the right in Poland, on the right side of Polish politics in the form of the Confederation Party, which despite many of its imperfections, has a fairly solid track record in criticizing and being properly Eurosceptic in this regard. So I think this might have been a signal from Andrzej Duda to sort of strengthen his old friends from Law and Justice to show that, you know, we realize what's happening with the farmers and we're with you. But at the same time, one can say that, you know, uh, he's not up for re-election anymore. This is his second term. So maybe he really doesn't care what happens anymore. And he just spit out the truth just like that. Um, or maybe it could have been also a ploy uh, ahead of his meeting with Donald Trump, because we know that, uh, you know, uh, to say the least, Donald Trump's outlook on Ukraine from the leaks that we're getting so far, including that report from the Washington Post from about two weeks ago, I think, about Trump's secret plan regarding Ukraine. Uh, Trump is not going to repeat uh, the mistakes of the Biden administration. He's made that fairly clear. And maybe President Andre Duda, who will still be president it, when Donald Trump takes office, had to take that into consideration. Yeah, it is amazing, though. But he's calling this out. And I think it's now shining a, a new light on it. Because as you pointed out, he's been very you know, pro-Ukrainian. He's been very anti-Russian. And for him to come out and call attention to something that had sort of been swept away as maybe a conspiracy theory, I guess, uh, really, I think, brings a new light to this in a really, uh, in, a, in a big, big way. Because now we know, as we saw, we saw Zelensky shaking hands with BlackRock in Kiev, you know, basically turning over their land to these Western investors who are going to come in and take over all of this land. Um, and this is, I think, a big, big moment. Do you think, um, is he going to get any bigger pushback inside of Poland on these comments, do you think? I don't think so. I, I think even, uh, you know, the left and the liberals in Poland recognize that there is a problem. I mean, the current government, uh, especially the uh, deputy minister of agriculture, one Michał Kołodziejczak, he's actually been pretty firm and one could say even radical, positively speaking, on this issue, uh, addressing the case that, you know, we've been flooded with Ukrainian cheap grain. And a lot of Polish companies that claim to be Polish were actually using Ukrainian grain in their products instead of Polish uh, grain because it was cheaper. Uh, he's actually talked about that and pushed that issue uh, to the fore in his dealings with, the, with his Ukrainian counterparts. Um, however, uh, the question is, will I think it'll all come out in June because it'll show whether law and justice is still a viable conservative party for uh, Polish farmers. That seems to be changing a little bit. There is a split. Uh, going, I would say, two ways between law and justice and between confederation. I think the older farmers are still sort of attached to the old party label of law and justice, whereas the younger generation of farmers, uh, the more, you know, the ones more in tune to dissident media and to, uh, for example, uh, you know, media such as yourself and who speak, for example, English and know what's happening in the world, they might tend to vote for a different party. So I don't think he really didn't say anything new to a Polish audience. We all knew this. Uh, however, the timing is very interesting. And the fact that, as you said, Andrzej Duda was at the front, basically spearheading the most radical, delusional, Russophobic, neoconish, globalist approaches towards Russia. I mean, for, for every smart thing that Andrzej Duda says, there's at least three or four other insane things that he says, because uh, after that famous meeting in Paris with uh, Emmanuel Macron, where uh, they discussed the potential of sending uh, French troops to Ukraine. He came out of that meeting and the journalist asked him, you know, so what happened? And Duda, clearly shaken, a little bit frustrated, said, you know, the best thing for us would be if uh, Russia didn't exist. So, you know, I mean, that's not the word of a mature statement. I mean, I can't imagine, right. you know, anybody, uh, Viktor Orban, heck, I can't even imagine Joe Biden saying that, as a matter of fact. And that says a lot, I think. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's, high, that's high praise. It, it's, it, it's like a two, you know, a second grader whining that somebody stole his candy on, on the playground. Oh, it would be better if Russia wasn't there. We don't want Russia to be there. So 
Uh, that's Andre Duda for you, unfortunately. But, you know, kudos to him for saying, for having the guts, the cojones to say at least a bit of truth uh, two days ago. Well, we'll be watching this very closely. We'll be watching what the farmers do here and what sort of movement uh, happens along the border. Um, way to go for Polish farmers um, standing up, standing up for their way of life uh, to all of this cheap this cheap brain that's being flooding, flooding into their country. Uh, Mike, great to see you. Dr. Mike Krupa, uh, always great to have you here on the show. Thank you so much for your insights as always. Thank you guys. Thank you, Clayton. Have a good day. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.